As you work your way through the first half of chapter 3, you have figured out the answer to the question we asked last week, how to change the velocity vector of a fluid from this vector into that vector. The answer is, you take the mass flow flowing through the machine, and you multiply it by the difference between the outgoing and the incoming vector, yeah? the difference between that vector and this vector here. The net force, in this case, would look something in diagonal like this, yeah? the force pointing in this direction generally. In the second half of chapter 3, we'll deal with cases slightly more complicated than this, cases where there's not just one outlet and one inlet, but a whole series of inlets and outlets, each with their own magnitude and their own direction. And so we'll deal with this by cutting up the whole surface into a series of tiny little surfaces. And each, each surface will have its own little mass flow, which we multiply by its own vector. And we'll add those up with an integral, with exactly the same equation as we dealt before. We'll do some other interesting stuff. We'll quantify the net moment exerted by the fluid as it passes through the control volume. And that is the amount of twisting I would have to generate on the machine as I hold the machine when the water is flowing from one side to the other. And lastly, we'll deal with energy. So we'll quantify how much energy that has to be put into the machine or any control volume arbitrarily in order to generate or sustain the mass flow going through it. As you prepare for the second half of chapter 3, I allow you to think about the following questions. Which forms of energy should we take into account when we compare outlet and inlet? Which forms of energy? Yeah. There are two obvious candidates that you're probably familiar with, kinetic and potential energy. But there are also two more that we need to take into account to make sure we don't forget forms of energy flowing out with the fluid as we compare incoming and outgoing energy and quantify how much heat and how much power, uh, we have, mechanical power, we have to put into the control volume. So that's the question uh, you could try to focus on as you read through the notes for the second half of chapter 3. Which two forms of energy, in addition to kinetic and potential energy, do we need to take into account to compare outgoing flow with ingoing flow through control volume. I wish you a very happy preparation, and I'll see you in a lecture on Thursday.